Well, following the Japanese attacks on December 7, 1941, the Japanese military made substantial gains in the Pacific. They continued to seize territories rich in natural resources, and they captured or constructed military bases throughout the Pacific to defend their growing empire. The 1942 Battle of Midway helped halt their progress, but while Midway damaged the Japanese Navy in some ways, something had to be done to push their land and air forces out of the bases they had established throughout the Pacific. This job largely fell to two men. General Douglas MacArthur, commander of the Southwest Pacific Area, and Admiral Chester Nimitz, commander of the Pacific Ocean Areas, with his focus primarily on the Central Pacific Area. Both men were responsible for millions of square miles, and sometimes it's hard to imagine how big this area was. And this map helps to explain. The continental United States is over 3.1 million square miles, and yet when superimposed just over General MacArthur's Southwest Pacific area, it's just a fraction of the size of the Pacific. Then there was the challenge of geography. Unlike in the European theater, where infantry and tanks were massed to sweep through Europe, with its millions of square miles of ocean and islands, the Pacific Theater required a different approach. MacArthur and Nimitz ended up employing a strategy that combined air, land, and sea forces to navigate this challenging mix of geography and distance. Today we call the strategy island hopping, and essentially MacArthur and Nimitz played leapfrog with the Japanese, generally avoiding heavily defended Japanese positions in favor of landing their forces in places where the Japanese were weaker. With World War II being a multi-front war and with so many troops being needed in other places, Nimitz and MacArthur could not afford high losses. Island hopping generally allowed them to preserve their troops and equipment, but sometimes they did have to capture certain Japanese strong points and losses were high. Everywhere they went, though, they worked to disrupt Japanese supply lines and to isolate or bypass Japanese strong points. Constructing or capturing air bases and airfields was an essential element in all of this, and air power really laid the groundwork for all future hops. In August of 1942, Nimitz's forces landed on Guadalcanal. Months of bitter fighting ensued, but in February 1943, the island was captured. MacArthur, meanwhile, began pushing the Japanese out of Papua New Guinea. Once this was accomplished, there was a joint move against Japanese forces in Rabaul, New Britain. Air and naval operations eventually isolated Rabaul, and Allied leadership decided to bypass it without landing any troops there. In doing so, a potentially costly land battle was avoided, and tens of thousands of Japanese troops were left cut off from supplies and effectively neutralized. From there, supported by advances in code breaking, MacArthur continued his campaign across New Guinea, bypassing Japanese strongpoints and capturing or constructing new airfields to support future hops. His forces moved across 1,500 miles of New Guinea in five months, bypassing and isolating tens of thousands of Japanese troops. Meanwhile, Admiral Nimitz's forces successfully attacked Japan's bases in the Marshall and Caroline Islands and in the Marianas. By the summer of 1944, Nimitz and MacArthur were moving closer to Japan. Their movements to this point had largely complemented each other, but now both had different ideas about what to do next. Nimitz wanted to hop to Formosa and use Formosa as a base from which to invade Japan. MacArthur wanted to hop to the Philippines. Forced to leave the Philippines in March of 1942, MacArthur was committed to his I shall return promise. President Franklin Roosevelt met with both men in Hawaii and listened to their ideas. About a month and a half later, he approved MacArthur's plan, mostly because MacArthur's plan did not require resources from the European theater where the Normandy invasion had recently occurred. On October 20th, 1944, MacArthur returned to the Philippines and fierce fighting followed. <laughs> 
By this point in the war, the long-range B-29 bomber dominated the Pacific. With a range of 2,400 miles, the B-29 was able to take off from small island airships and attack deep into Japanese territory. By the time the atomic bombs were dropped on Japan in early August 1945, approximately 67 Japanese cities had already been destroyed or rendered more than 50% uninhabitable by long-range bombers, based at airfields that had been captured or created as part of the island hopping campaign. Island hopping was an incredible logistical achievement. It was also the largest joint army-navy operation of the war. It was a very creative strategy that took into account the great distances and the challenging geography of the Pacific. Now, this doesn't mean that every operation was perfect. Hard lessons were learned at times, but it was a strategy that ultimately helped lead the Allies to victory in the Pacific.